From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Afternoon Edition. Right now on the Afternoon Edition, it is a first alert weather day. It's heating up around the Bay Area. We are currently under a heat advisory. We'll get to that in just a minute. But first... Good afternoon, I'm Elizabeth Cook. And I'm Ryan Yamamoto. We're just one hour away from the memorial service for the late Senator Dianne Feinstein. Let's give you a live look right now at San Francisco City Hall, where the late Senator will be remembered for a political career that began in this very building. It was a career of many firsts and one that eventually took her to Washington, D.C. And we're expecting a who's who of local, state, and national political leaders to attend this afternoon's memorial. Here's a look at the U.S. Senators boarding buses this morning just outside the U.S. Capitol. They have now arrived in the Bay Area to attend that service, a show of support for a Senate colleague who many of them served with since Feinstein was sworn in back in 1993. And the area around City Hall is now under tight security. Now, initially, the memorial service was going to be open to the public. But partly because of all the dignitaries, it was made a private event just last night. There is now a perimeter around City Hall that will keep people far back to see or hear the actual service. Instead, people are being told to watch the service, which we are live streaming on our CBS News Bay Area stream and our sister station, PIX+. But well, one person who is there, Julia Goodrich, is live from the memorial at City Hall. Jules, you'll be out there all afternoon for us. And I guess already people are starting to arrive for this memorial. They certainly are, Ryan and Liz, and what a fitting day for a memorial. If you look at the backdrop behind me, we're in front of City Hall. This is where Senator Dianne Feinstein started her career, her long career, as the first mayor, the first female mayor of San Francisco. As you were talking about security, yes, this is not open to the public. Dignitaries are coming in as we speak, and so even the media, and myself included, had to go through security procedures just as if you were going to the airport to be checked out. So we're here waiting for the service to begin at 1 p.m. Um, and a number of speakers will be at the podium today. Vice President Kamala Harris will be addressing the crowd here as well as Senator Chuck Schumer and a number of others. I also got a sneak peek at some of the rehearsals that were happening. There was a lovely chorus that was singing. They were practicing just before getting those mic levels ready. And um, I saw them as they were preparing the flags. Um, it is just a beautiful day. I will say it is warm very warm, but I think that's not going to take away from the moment here. And so many people are paying their respects today and they're talking about the senator and telling some really amazing stories. And I want to share one, this coming from San Francisco Fire Chief. And take a listen to this story. Back in the 70s and 80s when she was the mayor, she used to carry a turnout coat and helmet in her car. And uh, she used to go to fires with different, uh, uh, with the chiefs and uh, she's just a huge supporter. In addition, uh, the first women came into the San Francisco Fire Department when she was mayor. I love hearing these stories and the behind the scenes and everyone calling the senator a friend. Yes, she had a long history in politics, but she was a community member, she was a leader, and she was a friend. She was also a family member. And as we uh, are waiting for this memorial, I want to show you, we have aerials showing you kind of the, the scene around here. There is a perimeter and people are starting to come in. And yes, we will be showing this live on KPIX and also streaming on PIX Plus as well. Let's also hear from a former aide who worked closely with the senator back in the 90s. Listen in. Dianne Feinstein destroyed tokenness for women in politics. She destroyed it. You know, Dianne Feinstein became the mold for women, powerful women in politics. And, and uh, you know, you, you can't say that about, about, you know, women who just break glass ceilings. She actually created a wake that pulled a generation of women into politics. And as you can see, this is video from yesterday when it was public. People could stream into City Hall and pay their respects and sign a book. And this is where we really heard those heartfelt interviews from 
residents in San Francisco, some saying they didn't even know the senator, but they felt so inclined to come and pay their respects. Others saying that they had met her face to face in person and had taken a photo with her and she was there for a wedding ceremony and just happened to pop in and, and so was so was so gracious to take a photo with them. So it is really fun to hear those personalized stories because it, it really gives you a sense of the genuine human being that she was. And so we hear are back out live here in front of City Hall. And as I take a look behind me, kind of keeping a watch out for people that are showing up and some of the dignitaries. I don't think that they've arrived quite yet. We'll certainly keep you posted. We'll be here all afternoon covering this event. And uh, we're gonna send it back to you now uh, in the studio, live from City Hall. I'm Juliet Goodrich. Liz and Ryan. All right, thank you very much, Juliet. And Dr. Anthony Fauci is a longtime colleague and friend of Diane Feinstein. He spoke to our Reed Cowan on our morning edition, and Dr. Fauci remembered how he worked closely with then Mayor Feinstein during the height of the AIDS crisis. Well, it was a very dark time, as we all remember, with a great deal of pain because of the suffering and anxiety that was going on right here in San Francisco. And what it really required was the kind of response that was led by then Mayor Feinstein as well as the healthcare providers in the city of San Francisco, which actually were the prototype of the really excellent response showing empathy and care and concern at a time when we did not even know what the virus was that was causing this disease, much less had any specific therapy for it. And Mayor Feinstein, and then later on as Senator Feinstein was a great champion when I was at the NIH to getting us funds and to make sure that we acted appropriately with understanding and compassion for persons with HIV. So she was a champion both as mayor as well as senator. And I've had the privilege and honor of knowing her in both of those capacities. And I can tell you, she really was an icon to us all. When San Francisco was one of the epicenters of the HIV epidemic, San Francisco was investing under the mayor's leadership, more resources in the treatment and care of persons with HIV than the entire federal government, a city of less than 1 million people. And that is extraordinary and quite remarkable that that happened. And many people forget about that, but that's the reason why when you think about HIV and its early history, you have to think about San Francisco. And when you think about San Francisco, you have to think about the leadership of Maya Feinstein. She was quite the lady. We'll have live coverage of Senator Feinstein's memorial service today starting at 1230 on PIX Plus and streaming on CBS News Bay Area. Now let's give you a live look outside in San Francisco. It is Fleet Week and the activities in the city are in full force already. We'll have more on that coming up. But first, a heat advisory is in effect until tomorrow night. Let's check in with First Alert meteorologist Jessica Birch on this First Alert weather day. High pressure is beginning to build its way in, creating kind of like a heat dome over the state of California and pretty much all throughout the West Coast for that matter. Daytime highs today well above average. We're talking about 90s throughout the Santa Clara Valley, all the way up into the North Bay and an offshore wind that's actually really noticeable as we head into the next couple days. That'll help clear up the skies, giving us blue skies just in time for the blue angels right around the corner as we kick off our Friday and Saturday forecast in time for that air show. But let's take it a step back. That's tomorrow. We got to get through today first and for many of us we're under a heat advisory not necessarily up in the North Bay right now but keep in mind you are still expecting 90s in the forecast this afternoon here we go into San Francisco the heat advisory for the National Weather Service starts in San Francisco and it works its way down all throughout the Santa Clara Valley we're expecting upper 90s close to the triple digits in areas like San Jose today and with a very similar trend, we're also noticing 90s off into the East Bay, too. So just keep that in mind. It's a hot one. Hydrate as much as possible. Take good care of your loved ones and wear lots of sunscreen if you do have to stay outside for extended periods of time. It's day two, of the largest health care strike in U.S. history. Tens of thousands of Kaiser workers are on the picket line. Andrea Nakano has details on the impact being felt.
organizer workers were making sure they were heard and seen as they kicked off the biggest strike of healthcare workers in American history. But it is where they weren't that their message might be hitting hardest. I had an order to pick up an antibiotic and I was expecting to have a smooth, it stays open usually till six and I got in there and they said they were closing at five today. They're understaffed due to the strike. Megan Engel was one of few lucky customers in San Jose who managed to get her prescriptions filled. Others were turned away. Uh, I didn't even get to walk inside. The guy stopped me right at the door and said, uh, pharmacy? Yeah, uh, well, we close at 5 p.m. sharp, sorry. Kaiser made the move to close some of its pharmacies, or in this case, shorten hours, as 75,000 workers walked off the job. They're members of the Coalition of Kaiser Permanente Unions, and they include pharmacists, therapists, technicians, and others. Doctors and nurses are not part of the strike. At issue is the pay. For me personally, inflation has gone up so much and cost of living has gone up so much and we haven't got a cost of living raise in a very long time. I have two masters and I'm making $30 an hour. And staffing. Kaiser executives are not listening to us. And what we're asking for right now is staffing. We're having a hard time in staffing. We're short staffed all over the place in every classification that we do have. We had a lot of people leave the industry during COVID and they haven't replaced those workers, and we've still been behind ever since. Though most of the striking workers are here in California, Kaiser workers have walked off the job in several states. Hospitals and ERs are open with temporary workers to keep things running, but even the people who were surprised to see their San Jose pharmacy closed say they sympathize with the workers. Hopefully the workers get what they're looking for, but you know, it is unfortunate to us people that, you know, need our prescription drugs or, you know, any kind of care. It's unfortunate that the, the union is not getting their needs met, so I understand that as a, as a worker myself, so I understand their, their point of view. And we've been in touch with Kaiser. They tell us they've reached a tentative deal on wages and benefits, but no agreement that would end the strike early. Workers are threatening a longer walkout in November if there's still no deal.